In this video I'm going to talk about derivatives of logarithm functions, logarithmic functions. And the two formulas you need to know for derivatives of logarithmic functions are the following. Suppose you have f of x equals ln of x. It says the derivative of this, you simply get 1 over the variable, which is x. Okay, so there's kind of one of the basic ones. If you have something more generic, suppose you have ln of something more complicated, say g of x, the derivative of this logarithmic function will be kind of analogous. You'll get 1 over the stuff on the inside, but by the chain rule, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So another formula to know. Suppose your logarithm is not base e, as in natural logarithm. Suppose you have log base a of x. The derivative of that, it turns out, is pretty similar to the other one. You get, again get 1 over x. But then you multiply by the natural logarithm of whatever this base a is. Okay. And again, one more. Suppose you have f of x. Suppose you have kind of a generic logarithm log base a of g of x. The derivative of this one, you'll get 1 over g of x. So again, very analogous to um, the natural logarithm. But then again, you have to tack on this natural logarithm of the base, just like in the above example. Okay, so kind of the four basic formulas you want to know. Um, obviously the ones at the bottom are kind of the more general ones. So as long as you know those two, you should know everything you need to do about taking derivatives of logarithmic functions. After that it's just using the regular quotient rule, product rule, um, and all of those rules. But let's do a few examples. So again, in all of these we'll simply find the derivative. Okay, so suppose in my first example I have y equals the natural logarithm of x squared plus x. Well, I'm using this derivative rule. It says you get 1 over whatever's inside the parentheses, so x squared plus x. And then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is simply going to be 2x plus 1. And you could rewrite this. You could put the 2x plus 1 on top and x squared plus x on the bottom. And it looks like nothing's going to factor out that you can cancel. So this would, in fact, be your derivative. Suppose I have, as another example, suppose I have the cube root of log base 7 of x. Okay, again, anytime I have radicals present and I'm going to take a derivative, I rewrite these as fractional exponents. So I'll have log base 7 of x raised to the one-third power. So now I'm going to have to use the chain rule on this. And if you bring the power out front, I'll have one-third log base 7 of x. I have to take one away, so negative two-thirds, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of log base 7 of x, using one of our basic formulas we saw, you'll get 1 over x, and then you have to tack on the natural logarithm of the base. And if you wanted to, again, you could rewrite this as 1 over 3. Um, you have log base 7 of x raised to the positive two-thirds power. I've got an x in the bottom, and then I have my ln of 7 also in the bottom of my fraction. Okay, so you could put the x out front, the ln of 7 out front, however you want to rewrite it since it's all being multiplied. But this is your, basically your derivative. Let's do another example. Let's do quite a few more examples. Suppose I have the natural logarithm of x to the fourth times sine of x. This is kind of a, a pretty important little example because it highlights um, a nice property of logarithms. So, you know, at first logarithms are one of those things that tend to confuse people. Um, actually, sometimes having logarithms in a problem will make certain 
procedures easier, like in this case actually taking a derivative. So you could go about doing this by saying, well, the derivative of this is 1 over x to the fourth times sine x, and then you'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, in which case you would simply have to use the product rule. An easier thing to do on this is to rewrite this using properties of logarithms. And remember, if you have multiplication inside of a logarithm, you can break that up as addition. Okay, so I can rewrite ln of x to the fourth times sine x as ln of x to the fourth plus ln of sine x. And I could even rewrite this one more time. Remember this exponent rule. I can pull a 4 out front and have ln of x. There's not really anything to do with the ln of sine x term. And so I haven't taken a derivative yet. I've just used properties of logarithms to bust it up. Now I will take the derivative. So the derivative of ln of x being 1 over x plus the derivative of ln of sine x is 1 over sine x. If you multiply by the derivative of sine x using the chain rule, we'll get cosine of x. So we can rewrite the derivative as 4 over x. I could write this as, whoops, I need a plus in between, a cosine x over sine x. And cosine x over sine x is cotangent of x. Okay, so probably a lot easier than the original way I was talking about of having 1 over the inside and then using the product rule and then you'd have to simplify that down. It would take you quite a few extra steps to end up getting back to the solution. Let's do one more logarithm problem. Suppose I have y equals ln of x over 1 plus ln of 2x. Um, on this one, I'm just going to have to use the good old quotient rule. So it says you get the bottom times the derivative of the top, the derivative of ln of x being 1 over x. Then you put a minus sign in between. It says you leave the top part alone, and then we multiply that by the derivative of the top part, or excuse me, the bottom part, the derivative of 1 being 0. If I use the chain rule on ln of 2x, I'll get 1 over 2x times 2, and then it says that is all over the denominator, 1 plus ln of 2x, quantity squared. And at this point, um, you know, you could clean this up. I guess I'm kind of lazy. I don't really want to clean it up, but let me go ahead and do it here. Um, notice you could factor. Well, let's see. On the right-hand side, our 2s would cancel out. Notice I have a 1 over x on the inside. I also have a 1 over x on the first term in the numerator. I can factor the 1 over x out, and I would be left with 1 plus ln of 2x. And I've again factored out the 1 over x and the 1 over x. So I would have a minus ln of x left in the numerator. That's all over, again, the denominator. 1 plus ln of 2x quantity squared. And unless I have a good reason for multiplying out something like in the denominator, I would leave it alone. And if you wanted to, you could simply kick this x to the bottom of the fraction and have x times 1 plus ln of 2x quantity squared. And then you would be left in the numerator with 1 plus ln of 2x minus ln of x being your derivative. Okay, so just some basic, um, fairly straightforward derivative examples. Again, once you know these formulas and get comfortable um, with using them, it's simply a matter of using the still the same old stuff, product rule, chain rule, quotient rule, um, all of that. So if you have any other questions, feel free to send me an email. Also, I've got a lot of other examples um, talking about logarithms and their properties. Um, so feel free to take a look at my website. And um, once again, if you've got any questions, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer them.